Hey, before, um, so Coach, Coach Swain's about to get some closing remarks, uh, and Trevor's about to speak, but I just wanted to make sure I, I thanked uh, President Clements, um, the executive board, the leadership team, the board of trustees. Uh, the best part about, yeah, give them a round of applause, please. And I don't know if she's here, but Dr. Rhonda Thomas, could you give a round of applause as well? Hey, uh, just the backstory. We honestly could have did this thing last week. We had a couple of dudes just like, hey, let's just throw a protest. We probably would have made a lot of people mad because we didn't include a lot of people. The, the best part about this is everybody from our university was involved. It's beautiful and our communities come out. So I just want to give you guys a round of, pat yourselves on the back, round of applause. This is beautiful. Uh, this is really rare. This doesn't happen all the time. Uh, I think the world is in a special place right now where things like this can happen. Uh, and so right now I'm going to give Coach Sweeney the opportunity to address you guys. Um, and then from there, we got a couple more things planned. Thanks for me. Great rest of the evening. But thank you guys for coming out. Thank you guys for chanting. I love the energy. We love you guys. Appreciate that. Man, I just want to just kind of reiterate what everybody said already. And just thank y'all for coming together. You know, I was just saying over there, this is how things get done. It can never be just one side. It takes synergy. It takes people working together. And it's, this is beautiful. And I just appreciate everyone supporting this community today. Clemson is a special place. And we saw again why that is today. This is a historic time and a challenging time. But as I tell my team all the time, challenge is what creates change. I believe with all my heart that God stopped the world in 2020 so we would have perfect vision and clearly see the social and racial injustices and the changes that need to occur in our society. Nobody, nobody should feel less or be treated as less because of the color of their skin. God loves every single one of us the same. Black lives more than matter. Black lives significantly matter and equally matter. And for far, and for far too long, that has not been the case for the black community. And now is the time to push for equal justice and no longer tolerate police brutality or racism of any kind in this country. But as you saw today and moving forward, it has to be every, everyone's responsibility, not just some people's responsibility. It has to be everybody's responsibility Amen. to be more aware, to learn more, and to speak out against racial inequality. <laughs> United we stand, divided we fall. To move forward and to make this world and country better, we have to find a way to do this. We have to find a way to unify and to bring people together and to do that, we must spread love and respect, kindness, forgiveness and grace, lots of forgiveness and grace. We have to be able to disagree, but not be disagreeable. We have to understand that people are per not perfect, people have differences, and that people go through things differently. But I believe that the majority of this country are reasonable people and will work to unify. There is no hope for a better yesterday, a better last year, a better last 200 years. But there is hope in the future and for me, that comes from my faith in Christ. And because of that hope, I know that the best is yet to come and it's also my hope that somehow, some way during this time, 
that we will have a spiritual awakening in this country because I believe that that's where true heart change takes place. That's good. But first, we must understand, we must learn, and we must listen. And to understand, we have to put the effort forth to learn. And to learn, we have to listen. We can't change history, but we can learn from it. And there are certain things that we should no longer glorify or honor or celebrate in this year of 2020. And I'm embarrassed to say that there's things on this campus that I didn't really understand. I knew the basics, but not the details. But I've learned and I've listened. Two of our best players had the courage to speak out along with so many beautiful students on this campus about their concerns, their feelings about buildings on this campus. New Hopkins will always be remembered for his amazing career and fourth and 16. And Deshaun Watson will always be remembered for his fearless leadership and how he led us to our first national championship in 35 years. They both brought us a lot of joy a lot of joy to Clemson. We should no longer expect them or our players to hear our cheers if we do not hear their cries. I always tell our team that you have to create change from the inside out. And if we want the world to change around us, we have to start doing what is right for Clemson. Romans 12.2 says, Do not conform any longer to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. I greatly appreciate the leadership, the board, the president, for the actions not the talk, but the actions that they took yesterday. But I also, I hope that those who have the power to change building names will hear the cries of those that they once cheered for and the cries of all of these beautiful Clemson students, black and white, because that's everything I see out here today. I've often said that nothing exemplifies what the world needs more than a football team. To be honest, I'd like to go to Congress and I'd like to dress them all out in some pads and some helmets. I'd like to have a little Oklahoma drill, a little inside drill, a little Paul drill. I'd like to do some one-on-ones. Maybe we could make some progress. But I'm just going to tell you, it has been an incredible blessing of my life to see young men from all races, backgrounds, neighborhoods, apartments. I've been everywhere. Come here and become brothers and best friends and best men because of this game. They laugh, they bleed, and they battle together. But most of all, they love together. There is no perfect place and there are no perfect people. But I will tell you this. If I could bottle up what I've seen in our program the last decade and distribute it to everyone, this world would instantly be better. Our team loves each other. Our team is united unified and ready to continue to be a light in the darkness 
and to continue to lead. I'm incredibly proud of this group. So proud of what I've been able to see them do. And I'm so thankful that they chose me as their head coach, and I'm thankful that they chose to come to Clemson. I know they need me, and I stand with them and will do all I can to help them unify people and create the positive change that they seek. This team is blessed with incredible leadership. I've always said the best leadership comes from within. This team has incredible leadership. It's now my pleasure to introduce a couple of the young men. They don't need much introduction, but the team has chosen to speak. Darian Rencher and Trevor Lawrence. Thank y'all for coming, man. This is this is awesome. I think it's more than any of us even imagined when we were planning it. But um, I just want to give y'all some of my thoughts and feelings and, and what I've been going through the past few weeks. So uh, the past few weeks, I've been uncomfortable. That word uncomfortable will be an important one in all of our steps in our journey to bring equality. I've learned that every truly good thing in life comes from being brave and stepping into the uncomfortable. It's uncomfortable to set aside everything I know about, however, it's necessary. Recently, I've realized that America is different from the America that my brothers and sisters experience. I'm on the journey now of discovering how I can use my voice, platform, and influence to lift others up and stand for those who shouldn't have to stand alone. I've learned a lot this past month. I've learned a lot this past month. There's three main things that I'm learning. I'm learning to listen more. I'm learning that listening is usually more valuable than talking. You learn when you listen and you begin to understand when you listen. I'm learning to try to put myself in the shoes of those who are in pain. Empathy and compassion will be vital as we take the right steps towards reconciliation. I'm also learning that love can conquer all things, and love is what will bring change. One of the most timely verses right now is 1 Peter 4.8. It says, above all, keep loving one another earnestly, since love covers a multitude of sins. So let's continue to listen, learn, and love, even when it is uncomfortable. Especially when it's uncomfortable. Because this is when change happens. And the world for generations to come will be different. It'll be better. So thank you guys for coming out. And let this just be one of many steps in the right direction in the future. Thank you. Definitely a lot shorter. Fix this. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, once again, I just want to thank everybody for coming out tonight. Um, I just keep looking around. I've got teary out a bunch of times. I think I'm going to keep it together uh, during this, but this really is just beautiful. Uh, hopefully this moment, we can ball this moment up and carry it with us into our homes, our days, our, work, our workspaces, and do some real change. Um, I've titled this speech, The Time America Didn't Look Away. Uh, if I got some participation, nobody, don't be too cool, but please participate in this question. If over the past three months you've attended your first protest or demonstration, would you raise your hand? My hands raised just like just like you guys. Um, yeah, that's what I expected because I'm right there with you. My hand is up. This is my first time joining this way. Uh, my first protest. I've actually been able to organize it. Kind of cool. I don't know. We'll see. Um, but at the same time, this is my first time seeing black people suffer or die um, in America. And I'm just curious. Like I don't, I'm really curious. Why is America caring more now? Why are we caring more now? Um, and from talking to my grandmother, who's the uh, wisest lady in my life and can really cook, uh, she lives in St. Louis. Uh, she's 76 years old. I call her this week, and we're talking about just life and how everything's going on. She checks in all the time. I asked her, like, why do you think it's different this time? And she was like, I don't know. It just seems different this time, baby. And I agree. It's different this time. I'm 22 years old. I'm trying to figure it out and join the fight more now than I ever have before. Ultimately, I know I must stand for something. 
And I know I come from a long tradition of people who have stood for freedom and love for a long time, for years, for decades, for centuries, for me to be right here and for a lot of us to be right here. Through slavery, fighting to survive, Reconstruction, fighting for democracy, Jim Crow, fighting to be equal, civil rights movement, fighting to be heard, post-civil rights movement, fighting to rise up, having a black president, fighting to, uh, for our rightful place among the rest. Black people have been fighting for a very long time to see a better day in a country that hasn't fully fought for us. And as I stand here, as I stand here, I don't want to paint the picture that change hasn't happened. So I honor those brave men and women that took those steps years ago, our parents, our grandparents, all those that have gone before us. Change to me is the process and the end results. So I say we've made steps, but we all know there's work to be done. And I understand why a lot of people feel overwhelmed right now, feel frustrated. It seems hard to agree on anything. An argument awaits us almost at every turn. We try to explain our beliefs. Even making a simple statement like Black Lives Matter causes defenses to rise up. Our country seems like it's in flames because of a lot of rage, disappointment, and just like disbelief of the evil we've all seen on our phones. And honestly, it just feels helpless like there's no way forward sometimes. But I find myself here with hope because I'm seeing all the good that's already coming out of all this madness and tragedy. Like this special moment right here as I look across Bowman Field, I uh, feel where a lot of people look differently, come from, come from different. Uh, we're all here gathered together. And ultimately, as I've like been able to reflect and look within which is most important, I just feel like it's different this time. And I can hear you asking, why? Why is it different this time? Because this time America didn't look away. Many of you are here this evening because you didn't look away. In the past, we've all looked away from the real wounds that are on the body of America. For some, we lost hope, thinking it's just gonna be the way it is and it'll forever be that way. For some, we got selfish thinking, as long as it's not my people, not my family, not my friends, I'm good. For some, we try to ignore it, thinking that this can't really be how it is in America, but it is. For some, we suppressed it, thinking nobody cares to listen to our pain. And for whatever reason, maybe Corona, the world being on pause, maybe it's just been just a bunch of moments that have made this moment. Maybe it's the 2020 vision, seeing things clearly. Maybe it's TikTok, who knows. Um, <laughs> but for whatever reason, this time, people are not looking away. For eight minutes and 46 seconds, we were forced not to look away. For eight minutes and 46 seconds, we heard George Floyd's helpless cries, and we cried. I cried. We saw George Floyd have his life taken away. We felt our life being taken away, too. In the bystanders who were quiet, we saw those who would not fight for us. Eight minutes and 46 seconds, we faced the reality that systemic inequality exists, that racism both hidden and overt exists, that justice still exists. And by not looking away, we actually faced our brokenness, which, although painful, is always the first step of healing. By facing it, this has caused many people in our nation, like Trevor said, that aren't black, to listen. And more to listen, to actually believe the stories that they don't want to hear. And by facing it, it has caused the us that are black to be heard. And more importantly than to be, just be heard, but people actually believe us for the first time, that we've experienced a different America. And that's why I say, it's different this time. In the same breath, the way forward was the way we got here. Let's not look away, because this is really our chance to make some difference. So the question becomes, like, while we're all here, we got to get we march, but where do we go from here? I say the same thing. Let's not look away from the problems, but look for opportunities for the solution. So I say be brave enough to not look away. Look at the system. If you've been blessed with resources, bring others up that have been pushed down. If you are in leadership, make a way for those that haven't been able to get into those doors. If you are in power, speak up for those that aren't and make decisions that bring about true equality. If you're successful, help others be successful. Lift as you climb. If you benefit off what has been built, make sure you build so more people can benefit because not everyone is benefiting right now. I say be brave enough to not look away from relationships. The struggle for freedom means more than just sympathy, but solidarity. Sympathy feels bad about a situation. Solidarity joins us. They stand, they stand with people who are struggling and they fight for them, which you guys have done today. And to my white brothers and sisters, continue to listen, continue to have tough conversations, continue to use your privilege to help others, Continue to learn, continue to put yourself in other people's shoes. To my black brothers and sisters, keep being brave to tell your stories. Continue to burn with passion, continue to empower those around you. Continue to turn your anger, which is rightfully so, into some purpose. Let your frustrations fuel you for more change. And continue to tell truth to people that have been scarred for, for years. Black is beautiful, black is proud, black is wonderful, black is not less than. 
Rock is just as good. Rock is wonderful. And finally, let's not be afraid to look in the mirror. Search your heart, all of us. Identify the attitudes or the assumptions that we hold against people that look different than us. Don't allow space for hatred, because nobody wins there. Don't allow space for prejudice. Recognizing, when we look in the mirror and deal with what's inside, this is what brings about true change. And when our heart changes, when our hearts changes, we change. And as we change, our homes change, and as, as our society, as our homes change, our society changes. Hopefully, as our society changes, our future changes. As our hearts change, we change. As we change, our homes change. As our homes change, our society changes. And hopefully, our future changes. And as we all commit to do this, hey, it's not, uh, this is one step in the right direction. Uh, change the name of the bills is one step in the right direction. And as we continue to continue to take steps, one step, one conversation, one prayer, one time just showing up, one protest, one moment, one belief, one reflection, uh, one cry, just one everything. As we all continue to do that, I think we'll look back and we'll see that we made some difference. And collectively, we make the world better. So I pray when history records this moment, it records a story of a generation that sees the opportunity because they refuse to look away. It's different this time. I got a story for you guys. Uh, so my one of my friends, we kind of grow up together, we go to church together. He's about to sing a song that we all, I would assume, are familiar with. And I never knew this until one of my mentors told me this recently. But the song is Amazing Grace. And uh, the backstory behind Amazing Grace, the, act, the guy who wrote it actually was a slave owner. He was a part of the slave trade in Britain. Um, he lived his life. Obviously, we, none of us are fond of slavery. He treated people wrongly. He was really far away from God. Um, but there came a moment, he was on a ship, and it was in the middle of the sea. He thought he was gonna die, there was water in the boat. And it was like a crowd for God, like, all right, God, if you let me get through this, I'm gonna follow you. And so what actually happened was this guy who was a slave owner became the guy who actually made slavery illegal in Britain. And he wrote the song Amazing Grace because if God could use, like, could use his story, show him some mercy, that he could do it for anybody. And so I feel like in our country, when there's so much broken and so much hurt, and when we sing Amazing Grace, we're gonna need it. For everybody and everything. So my friend, uh, my dear friend, we actually got the same name. Uh, his name's Darian too. Uh, he's actually about to come up here and sing. Uh, he's gonna do a great job. It's a sing along too.
invite you guys into this next tune. Because our world looks kind of crazy. And I'm assuming that we don't know what's next because 2020 has been a ride. <laughs> right? So I just want to invite you to this next song. It says, Even when I don't see it, you work even when I don't feel it, you work it. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you work it. Even when I don't feel it, you work it. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop. Come on, can we sing it like you believe it? Say Even when I don't see it, you work it. Yeah. Even when I don't feel it, you work it. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you work it. And even when I don't feel it, you work it. You never stop, you never stop working. Come on, let's declare that God is a way maker. Sing it. Waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness of my God, that is who you are. We believe it is with you, yeah. Waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness of my God, that is who you are. And that is who you are. And that is who you are. Oh, that is who you are. And that is who you are. Oh, that is who you are. Yes, yes, God. That is who you are. Oh, that is who you are. That is who you are. Come on, let's sing Waymaker one more time. Yes, Lord. Waymaker. Miracle work, promise keep light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. We believe in yes, we do to dismiss but make sure you also i was meant to announce this hey if you if you're gonna go home and throw your poster away there's somebody who wants to archive everything so if you if you leave them here somebody's gonna come pick them up but also take your water bottles don't leave your other trash nobody cleans them back to clemson um but hey this i want to say one more thing before we wrap it up um just kind of just like with that song like for me, uh, the reason I can like have some hope and have some faith for a better day is because my, my faith as well. I believe that God did this, man. I'm looking around like there's no way uh, a couple of four dudes who broke and got no money trying to figure it out could have did this. Um, but seriously, like God did this and God's doing it. Um, like I think revive, yeah, you can clap. And oftentimes people talk about revival, they think it happens inside of the church building. But I believe revival is this, uh, outside of some walls, outside of a steeple, whatever. This is it. Um, and with that, I think oftentimes we think we can do it without God. But these moments humble us. They really do. They bring us together. They allow us to look up and allow us to look within. We need all three. We need to be together. We need to look within as we leave here. Shame on Clemson football, shame on Clemson University, shame on everybody who walked up here. If we leave here and don't take another step, shame on us. The goal, the overarching goal was, was to be peaceful. Thank you guys for not showing out. Appreciate it. Uh, 
But the the biggest goal, man, was to lead, for this to be a step in the right direction and for it to be a trickle effect of steps. The steps are going to be taken. So hopefully after today we see a pivot in our own lives, our university, our state, and the nation is watching Clemson like they always have been. This little town has always been a light for the world, and it won't stop now. People come here from all across the country to come to school with a great university like this, and we send them out. And hopefully when we send them out, they do better than anything else with this, where they're from. And so I just wanted to pray, and I know some people don't pray, some people feel different ways, but this is my most sincere heart posture I could give you from tonight. And honestly, I was debating it, but man, y'all close already. We wanted to lock it up, so if you could lock elbows to the person beside you. I wasn't gonna do it, but y'all like two feet away anyway, so look, that's what we're gonna do. I need my boys, my, uh, we're gonna call us the Fantastic Four to come up here. Uh, There we go. Hey, there we go. Lock it up. Lock it up. Lock it up. Lock it up. Hey, together we can do a whole lot more than we can, than by ourselves. This is beautiful. This is just a glimpse of what can happen. This is just a glimpse. Many more days to come. Many more things like this ahead. Let's stay together. Let's fight for change. Let's be the change. Let's make a difference. I'm gonna pray. Then hey, you can reflect, stay around, do whatever. We gonna hang out and clean up, clean up stuff. Um, dear Lord, thank you just for this moment um, in history. Um, you chose us for this moment, you really did. For such, for such a time as this, that you chose these people. You, everything is on purpose, our ages, our jobs, our university, the sports we play, the classrooms we sit in, the jobs we have, the family you've given us, uh, where we live right now. And Lord, I just pray that this moment uh, would be a movement, a series of steps that have been taken. I pray we will continue, the people you bless with platforms to amplify voices that are unheard. I pray we would continue to speak out about things that are wrong and not think about the repercussions because they don't matter if we lose our soul. But I thank you for everything you're doing in the lives of these people. Lord, I pray this witness be uh, for show, but this would be so, something so deep in us that we will leave here and know this was, this was a step, a big step in the right direction. Uh, so, Lord, this is only the beginning. Continue to do what you can do. Allow our generation to lead the way. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Love y'all. Love y'all. Love y'all.